And was there anyone, anyone at all, anyone at all who had a ha, had any type of inclining or in like in type in, like any type of feelings that maybe we shouldn't be pumping seven or eight drinks into this pilot, this airline pilot who's going to be flying a plane? Is anybody thinking about that? Jordan here. What's up, guys? I think that, well, we did a video a few months ago, a few weeks ago, prob probably a few weeks ago. It's not that long ago. I've I've done it on the live streams, but I, since I've switched over to doing videos, um, I haven't quite done too many of these. But one of my favorite stories to follow are always the plane stories, people fighting on planes, People having knocked down, drag out brawls on planes. We can't get enough. I can't get enough. I have the most fun. I have the most fun when it comes to planes. Because I, I just imagine, I'm like, man, why doesn't this ever happen whenever I'm on the plane? Because my experiences on the plane are I'm I'm well, I'm sitting in a seat that I don't fit in, first of all. I'm six seven, two hundred and fifty pounds, so I don't I don't sit in any airplane seats. So I'm I'm cramped up, but everybody's quiet. Everybody's cordial. Every now and then you'll get a crying baby, but I never hear somebody just being belligerent. I never see anyone looking around looking for a fight, and I never witness any fights. I'm so disappointed, but I'm glad that we do have the internet and we do have video so we're able to see it. But this is a little different because having this much fun it's always it's always great looking at at the the, the crazy passengers who are trying to you know they're just trying to get from point A to point B. They were sitting in the in the lounge maybe a little bit too long. Maybe had that that four or five different uh, beers. They started slurring a little bit. Couldn't really tell if they were mm, all there or not. <laughs> Got to get off the plane. But you don't normally think about any of the crew, and you don't think about the crew being intoxicated. You don't think about the crew being intoxicated while they're working, while they're trying to get you to your destination, while they're trying to make you safe. But in Florida, of course, it had to be a Florida man. There was a JetBlue pilot removed from a plane on suspicion of being drunk. Now, uh of course, of course, of course. A JetBlue pilot was removed from his plane's cockpit before takeoff Wednesday morning after authorities suspected he was drunk. And they say they found him to be over four times the legal blood alcohol limit for pilots. Oh, my God, James Clifton. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? James Clifton, 52, was taken into custody at Buffalo Niagara International Airport after TSA officials suspected that he may be impaired while passing through security and alerted airport police airport officials said in a statement now i would be wondering like what what was he doing and maybe we can find it on the statement but what was he doing that made them think that you know everything wasn't all up all up in arms let's see here early this morning this is just a um no this doesn't tell us anything of course, Fl well, Florida man, Florida man. Um, yeah, that didn't say anything. I, I, all I'm thinking is, was he mumbling to himself? Was he dancing a little bit? Was he stumbling? That's got to be a sight. If you have a, f <laughs> if your pilot's just like, hey, ready for this flight? Let's go. If they're if they're slurring, if they're not able to walk straight if they're walking sideways to you maybe then maybe there's a problem maybe there's a problem but i'm sure i'm sure when he was going through security they probably just smelled his breath that's really probably what it was because he's probably not too not not the dumbest guy i hope not but maybe maybe possibly he was trying to be quiet and 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 get through there because if he drank this much more than three to four times the legal limit Certainly he's done. This ain't his first rodeo. There's no way this is his first rodeo. No way this is his first rodeo. It can't be. It cannot be. 
Clifton, who was to fly to Fort Lauderdale, was given a portable breathalyzer test and registered a level of 0.17. Authorities said the federal limit to legally drive in the U.S. is blood alcohol content of 0.08, which is half that. Though pilots are barred from flying if they have a concentration of 0.04 or more if they've had a drink within eight hours of flying. So you have to be very careful if you're having a drink when you're a pilot and you're about to fly. That's a weird sentence. You would think that pilots wouldn't. Ah, man. You would think, right? You would think, but hey, some pilots, gotta they got to do what they got to do. When interviewed by police, Clifton allegedly admitted to having seven to eight drinks, Jesus, seven to eight drinks before getting on the aircraft. A spokeswoman for the Niagara Frontier Transportation Authorities, TSA, which oversees Buffalo Airport, told NBC. Now, was he, where did he have his drinks at? Where was he having these drinks at? Where the hell did he have his drinks at? Like, what, was he sitting in the lounge? Do they just let pilots sit in the lounge and get wasted? Do they do that? I guess they don't really... I guess the people working at the lounge have no idea what exactly, who exactly is who, and you know who's to say like you're you're a pilot and you you're heading home and you're you're just hopping a you're just hopping on this flight over here so that you don't have to, you know you're not you're not actually flying and it's not like people know that you're not flying but you may be dressed in your uniform. He had to be dressed in his uniform. He was at work, so did he? have the seven or eight drinks at any type of lounge and was there anyone anyone at all anyone at all who had a ha, had any type of inclining or in like in type in, like any type of feelings that maybe we shouldn't be pumping seven or eight drinks into this pilot this airline pilot who's going to be flying a plane is anybody thinking about that or do you do you really not know? It seems like you you really don't know, so you just trust you trust their responsibility their, their responsible abilities, and it doesn't seem like he was very responsible. It doesn't seem like he is very capable of being that responsible. But we'll continue on. Before submitting to the test, he allegedly said he needed to get his gun from the plane's cockpit. The spokeswoman said pilots are permitted to carry handguns on planes so long as they are licensed and trained to do so. The gun was confiscated by police along with three 17-round magazines. Uh, I don't really mind uh, our, our airline pilots having guns. I do not mind that at all. I totally support that. I totally support that. Now, I wouldn't want my airline pilot wasted. I wouldn't want my airline pilot drunk with a gun in the cockpit. But I feel like after seeing this story and then seeing that he said that he had seven or eight drinks and he was just like, cool, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fly now. Dude, dude, there's got to be a lot of people doing that. And this is not his. I feel like this is probably a normal thing for him. And he was probably feeling himself. And he was like, you know what? Normally I have five or six. I'm good. Let me have seven or eight, and we're going to be good. We're going to have a couple of those Jordan Weisers and get it going. Clifton, who is from Orlando, Florida, was taken into custody and could face federal charges, I would assume. A JetBlue representative told HuffPost in a statement Thursday that airline that the airline is aware of the incident and that it is cooperating fully with law enforcement. You know what would be funny? If they said, we are aware of the incident and we are not talking to the feds. We are not fucking with y'all. Fuck off. We got our employee. We got his back. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if, like, if a if a company stood behind their people, especially for shit like that? <laughs> oh God, we're also conducting our own internal investigation. They always have to do their own internal investigation just to show that you know they're trying. The crew member involved has been removed from his duties. He's been fired, or was he put on? Um, was he put on to like an, another job or something like that? Um, so that <laughs> that these stories, I don't know why they entertain me so much, but they really do. Because flying, you would think, would be something that you have to be super, super prepared for, and you wouldn't be capable of doing it drunk. Now. It seems like it's it's a lot different nowadays than what it was previously. It seems like a, a lot of the airplanes and a lot of those systems are 
are getting to the point to where they can kind of fly themselves. They're pretty much giant drones. And the pilots are in there kind of making sure, just making sure that everything goes as planned instead of having all that pressure to make sure we're going to get this flight home. We're going to get you home safely. And it's a lot of pressure because it's like, nah, we do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flights a day. And they do it with relatively pretty damn well and pretty safely. So, oh, man, <laughs> guys, I don't know what to say because it's like, what do you, you, are you, are we able to like, talk to our pilots before we get on the plane? Are we able to, because you're not, because whenever all these types of fights go on, you normally see it and you hear it and you, you, you have a clue that something's going to happen because someone's being belligerent. Somebody's being a little bit extra. Someone's slurring a little bit. This one, it's not like most people talk to the pilot before they get on the damn plane. Nobody had any idea. Now, would it have been okay? Probably. They, there's a co-pilot. There's, they, they probably would have been okay. And he probably could have handled it drunk. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? But the final thoughts for this one is I, I, there's nothing really much you can do or say about it. Because all I can say is, hey, just remember, because you never know. The next time that you're flying, you may have a drunk pilot. Oh, 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 oh,